Hey everyone, my name is Evan Thomas, and in today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the new Zhiyun Crane Smooth 4, the compact, powerful, three-axis stabilizer for your mobile phone. What you can do with this gimbal in your mobile phone is truly incredible. You can capture stunning shots with high production value. There should be really no reason for aspiring filmmakers to not be able to go out and capture great content. This thing only goes for around $140, um, it's small, compact, you can take it with you anywhere. I've been an avid user of the larger Zoom cranes for DSLRs, and while those are great for higher-end filmmaking, if you want to shoot something on the go, there's really no better option than this small, affordable gimbal. Some of the features include better object tracking, moving time lapses, a go mode, and a new focus and zoom pull wheel. So the first thing you'll notice are a set of instructions. Mine are in Chinese um, and I do not speak Chinese. So these are absolutely useless. So I had to find out all this stuff on my own. Um, but opening the box, you'll see it's, like I said, small and compact and great for traveling. Inside you have this nifty little tripod stand, which is great for getting the gimbal set up. You have a USB-C charging cable, and then you have the gimbal itself. Very simple, three things. So to get started, I'm just going to fix the gimbal to the tripod. And for now, I'm going to get rid of the box and the cable. It's already fully charged. And the first thing you want to do is download the Zhiyun Play app. You can get it in the Google Android store or the Apple iOS store. And before I turn on the gimbal, I just want to attach my cell phone to the gimbal. So to do that, I'm just going to click this unlocked, hold up these clamps and slide my phone in. And to balance it, I just want to make sure that the center of gravity is in line with this motor here. So you can see if the camera, if I let go and my phone's going like this, I need to adjust the lock wheel. And then I need to slide it over this way. But if I slide it too much, you'll see it goes that way. So I need to slide it back to the middle. And this gimbal can support a weight of 500 grams. An iPhone X only weighs about 175 grams. Um, so you don't need to get the balancing perfect because the motors are powerful enough. But the better you balance it, the smoother your shots will be and the longer the battery will last. And speaking of the battery, Zhiyun says this will last up to 12 hours. Through my testing, it's closer to nine, but that is an incredible amount of time for a small gimbal like this. So once you have the gimbal on and you have the app installed, I'm just going to hold down the power button and you'll see the lights come to life, these blue LED lights. And these lights also indicate how much battery you have left. So obviously four lights, 100% battery, and it goes down in intervals of 25%. So now I'm just gonna open the Zhiyun Play app, and you have to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on in order for the Zhiyun app to connect with the gimbal. So just make sure Bluetooth turned on. Right away, you're gonna see that I'm in pan follow mode. So if I pick up the gimbal and I pan to the left, the gimbal will follow. If I pan to the right, the gimbal will follow. Now, if I click this switch down here, down to L, which stands for lock, you can see that when I move the gimbal in any direction, it's staying completely locked. So now I'll just walk you through some more of the buttons that are on this new interface. And this is a great redesign that they have here. I really hope that they bring this similar uh, control interface to the higher end Zhiyun cranes that are for DSLRs because they just have added more buttons and it's more intuitive and easier to use. So to connect your phone to the gimbal, just click connect device and then select the smooth four, a little check mark will appear and then you can hit camera and you'll be brought in to the settings. So once you're connected, you have full control of your cell phone through all of these controls um, on the crane. One thing you'll start playing around with immediately is this zoom wheel. So if I just turn it towards me, it zooms out. If I turn it away from me or counterclockwise, it zooms in. And you can adjust the sensitivity of the zoom in one of the menu settings. Now, if I touch the function button, which is that little button in the bottom left that looks like a crosshair, if I tap that once, now when I use the zoom wheel, it turns to a focus puller. So if I turn it clockwise or I turn it towards me, 
it's uh, focusing on the subjects that are closer to the camera. And if I turn it counterclockwise or away from me, it's focusing on objects that are further away from the camera. One thing I'm going to say right off the bat that I don't like about this gimbal is that it doesn't have joystick controls. So if you do have the DJI Osmo, you've probably noticed that you can use the joystick here to control the camera. So if I were to click on the left of the joystick, the camera would move this way or that way. Um, that's something that they, they left out of here. So hopefully a new firmware update will make that an option. Another cool thing I would like to just point out before I jump into all the buttons is that if you set it to lock mode by switching the flip to L, you can use this as a tripod. So if you need to record something at home, you want to record a video like this using your cell phone, you can just use this tripod mount and then place the camera anywhere you want. And there you go. All right, so let's talk about all the buttons that are on the interface. In the top left is the menu button. So by clicking that, I can set all of my camera parameters. I can turn on the flash, I can turn on a timer, I can go to HDR mode, set the white balance, etc. And to exit the menu screen, I just click menu again. Okay, now to the click wheel. If I click the top of the wheel, you're going to be getting the frames per second mode. Um, for this video, I'm just shooting in 720, 30 frames per second to save some space, but I can do anything from 4K, 24 FPS, up to 4K, 60 FPS, which is pretty incredible. Again, if you want to exit this, you just push the back button or the menu button. So if you push the left side of the scroll wheel, you're going to flip the camera. So right now I'm on the front camera, and if I push the left side button down, it goes to the selfie camera. Just push it again to switch back. If I click the bottom of the scroll wheel, that's going to bring up my library of everything that I've shot. I'm just going to push the menu button to go back. If I press and hold the center button, that's going to turn the light on my camera. Before I go any further, I'd just like to ask you guys a favor. If you're enjoying this video and find it useful, please click the like button. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment in the uh, comment sections below and I get back to everyone's questions within 24 hours. And finally, if you'd like to see more tutorials about Sony cameras or Xeon products or travel filmmaking, travel photography, please click subscribe. I've already talked about the little crosshair button on the bottom left, but again, that just switches between focus and zoom mode for the camera. If I wanna record a video, I just hit the little red record button and if I want to take a picture, I just hit the camera button. Right now, I'm in pan follow mode. So if I pan to the left and I pan to the right, it's going to follow. But if I tilt down or tilt up, the camera will not follow. However, if I press and hold the bottom trigger, the camera goes into follow mode and it follows me. You can see that even if I tilt down or up, the camera is tilting down or up. Now, the top trigger is very similar, but it's a much faster responsive thing, and it's called go mode. So right now, you can see that there's a little bit of delay when I'm not holding down the trigger. But if I hold the follow mode, the motors engage, and it follows right away. Pan, tilt, everything. So those are two little very useful triggers that I wish the Zion Crane uh, DSLR gimbals had. Um, so hopefully they'll be bringing this feature to the new updated versions of the Z and Cranes. And I should also mention that if you move the camera out of center and you double tap the bottom trigger, the camera will return to center. On the right side is a little USB-C charging port uh, for the gimbal. And back here, it's gonna be tough to see, I'll try to get a picture of it. There is a micro USB cable that you can attach to your phone to the gimbal to charge your phone uh, through the gimbal. So that's a great feature because the camera will probably run out of battery or your phone will run out of battery quicker than the gimbal. Okay, a lot of people are curious about the moving time-lapse mode. So I just want to show you how to do that. So just click menu, click camera, and you go to mode time-lapse. So then just hit select. And first you're going to choose a starting waypoint. So you can just adjust your camera like this if you're in the lock mode. And then click the flash button again or the center button to confirm the first waypoint. Then you can move your gimbal over a little bit and click the second waypoint. And then you can just go down and adjust all these settings if you want to. 
Um, I'm just going to go to next. And then for the interval, I'm just going to keep it really short for this and do it um, 10 seconds. And it's going to take a shot every 30th of, of a second. And it's going to take a shot every 30th of, of a second. Go down to start. The camera will return to the first waypoint. And it will take a photo every 30th of a second while moving to the second waypoint. And you can get a pretty cool time lapse feature. If you want to review your uh, footage, just click the bottom of the dial. You'll be brought up to the uh, library. Select the video, push play, and you can see what I just captured. So the moving time lapse would be great for uh, capturing traffic, capturing a sunset, capturing something blowing in the wind, um, anything like that. You can really get creative with this. All right, that's it for today's video, short and sweet. Um, bottom line, this is an amazing product for $140, you cannot beat it. If there's one thing I had to buy as a filmmaker and I had $150 in my pocket um, and I already had a cell phone, which most people do, it would be this gimbal. I mean, for $140, $150, uh, what you can do with it is truly incredible and you can really step up your production value of your videos. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, leave a question in the comments section below. I will respond to every single one of them. All right, thanks for watching.